Welcome back to Green Plum Summit 2020, the reimagined digital customer conference. My name is Jacques Eistock, and my next guest is Michael Short. Michael's a data scientist at a longtime partner of ours, A42 Labs, who offers some of the best data science consultants to our customers around the world. Michael is here to talk about BERT, Nuix, and Green Plum. So, Michael, take it away. Hi, hey, Jack. Thanks for that. Um, so, yeah, so the name of my presentation is uh, Modeling the Smartest Guys in the Room uh, with BERT, Nuix, and Green Plum. Uh, yeah, so uh, next slide, please. Okay, so just a bit of an intro. So I'm Michael Short, like Jack said, data scientist at A42 Labs. Um, so this presentation was inspired by a book about the Enron scandal called The Smartest Guys in the Room. And it's about using Green Plum Nuix and the BERT NLP model from Google to identify emails that indicate potential fraud and financial crimes. Um, so a little background on A42. Uh, so we're an AI and machine learning software and services company. Uh, we help innovative companies build, deploy, and manage enterprise-grade machine learning solutions. And one service we offer, like Jacques said, is data science consulting. Um, our data science team works with customers and partners across a wide range of industries, uh, financial services, banking, retail, logistics, and everything in between. Um, <clears throat> and my personal background is in mathematics and machine learning, and I've been with A42 Labs for a little over the year, over a year, and uh, has spent quite a bit of time working in Green Plum. And at A42, we use the database for everything from reporting business intelligence to more sophisticated workloads like distributed machine learning, which is what I'm discussing here. Um, and so for this presentation, going through the agenda, so I'll review uh, our main use case, which is uh, electronic document compliance. Where we, we built a machine learning solution to identify emails indicating potential fraudulent behaviors, an example being insider trading, uh, in order to automate the auditing of these emails. Um, so we had a customer engagement with this, and I can't go into too much detail about that because it involves their private data. Um, but we used a similar approach to analyze uh, the Enron emails, which are available publicly. Um, so currently, we're working on a public-facing demo uh, to put on our website for people to see that uses the uh, emails released from Enron. <clears throat> and we leverage a software called Nuix to extract the email and attachment information loaded into Greenplum through PXF and use the BERT NLP model for classification. Um, so I gave a talk about a little over a month ago at this summit uh, where I reviewed the first part of our solution, which is uh, parsing the data with Nuix and then loading it into Greenplum with PXF. And so here I'll talk about the second half, which is um, how we use that data in Greenplum to fine tune the BERT model on an external GPU cluster and then load it back into Greenplum to score the emails and flag ones that we can that are potentially fraudulent. So uh, next slide. So as I mentioned, I can't really share too many details with our customer's use case, um, but I can say that we had, uh, there was an estimated yearly savings of about a million dollars uh, that they wouldn't have to spend on paying people to go through these emails manually and audit them, um, which is pretty good. Uh, so instead though, for this presentation, I'll walk through the similar process we used to build the same kind of ML model um, on the publicly available and run data. And <clears throat> here we used a pre-trained model called BERT. And because it's pre-trained, it's quick to set up and applicable to a lot of diverse sets of unstructured data beyond just emails. So uh, next slide. One second, I lost my place. Um, so just a quick overview of the specific use case we developed our, for our customer was electronic document compliance where, and this is where Companies store their email and attachment data, so the potentially problematic emails can be reviewed internally. Um, and so our solution scans these emails, emails automatically and proactively. And the goal there is to reduce the rate of false positives so that the review team doesn't have to look at ones that they could have you know, ignored. And so this saves both time and money that you would incur in auditing them. So next slide. Okay, so the data set we use for the presentation uh, comes from emails that were turned over as part of the investigation into fraudulent activity at Enron in 2001. And in case anybody is unfamiliar, um, Enron was an energy company that uh, pretty uh, famously used fraudulent accounting practices to hide debt and artificially inflate the value of their company. And when they declared bankruptcy in 2001, it was the largest bankruptcy in history at that time. 
and uh, caused their stock price to dive from about $90 a share to less than one. <laughs> um, and this had a huge impact on the economy, it devalued investors, um, you know, it devalued employees' retirement plans, which were in Enron stock, and there was a total loss of about $6 billion in assets. And it even caused uh, the dissolution of the company that they hired for their financial auditing. So pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> um, and so companies want to avoid having, you know, anything even remotely close to this in the future. And so our motivation in exploring this problem is to understand how they can take proactive measures to prevent this from occurring, but not incur huge costs that are, you know, part of hiring a professional auditing team. So uh, next slide. So again, just kind of an overview. So in phase one, like I mentioned in my previous talk, I talked about uh, how we'd leverage unit, uh, Nuix um, to parse the email attachment data and then PXF to load it into Greenplum pretty easily from S3. Um, and so here I'm gonna describe phase two. Uh, so we leverage the BERT NLP model, which Google has already pre-trained for you and you can go out and use, download it on their website and use it yourself. Um, but they train it on the entire text of Wikipedia. So a pretty huge data set. Um, so we use that, we fine tune the model on the you know, email and attachment data we have from Enron. And then we built the email classifier to perform inference um, internally in Greenplum. So next slide. So I've mentioned it a lot, but what is BERT? Um, so BERT is an NLP model that was created by Google Research and it's pretty new. It was first published in 2018. Uh, BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations for Transformers, which sounds a bit like a word salad. Uh, but what it means is it utilizes a pretty common uh, architecture for deep learning called a transformer. And that creates numerical representations of each sentence of text and turns it into, by default, a 767 element vector. And that vector you can kind of see on the right has uh, values between zero and one. Um, so in order to obtain the context for each sentence, BERT is conditioned on both the tokens before and after the token masks when it's training. So it gives context uh, of both the text that precedes and succeeds the text that we're encoding. Um, it's cutting edge in the field of NLP, which is, it's gotten a lot of press because of this. Um, it's set record high scores on several really prominent NLP metrics like the general language understanding and evaluation metric or GLUE, and the Stanford question and answering data set metric called SQUAD. Um, and as of October 2019, I think BERT has been in integrated into the Google search algorithm. So they're pretty proud of it. Um, yeah, so next slide. Okay, so how's BERT different than most machine learning models? So most deep learning models that you work with, they're trained from scratch on problem specific data. And training for any model with a sufficiently large data set is pretty time consuming and can be pretty costly. Um, BERT is an example of a transfer learning model, which means that the base BERT model comes pre-trained by Google using a very large data set, Wikipedia, and the end users can leverage this pre-trained model out of the box. Um, in addition, the model can be fine-tuned on problem-specific data by data scientists relatively easily to get a model that works better for specific problems they're investigating and saving the cost and time it would take to go and train their own model on Wikipedia plus their problem-specific data from scratch. Okay, next slide. This is just kind of a diagram that explains the overall uh, architecture of the solution we have. And I've kind of like alluded to it before, but initially we parsed email and attachment data into JSON files uh, and exported them from Nuix and were able to leverage PXF pretty easily to load this data into Greenplum from an S3 bucket and then once it's in Greenplum, we use a separate AWS GPU cluster to perform fine tuning of the BERT model uh, on the email and attachment data that we have in Greenplum and then exported the model back into our database. And so we can perform inference inside the database itself. Okay, next slide. Okay, so there are a couple of architectures we could have used um, for fine tuning BERT. Um, so we used a uh, you know, a GPU cluster that was external to Greenplum, but you can also do it internally on a GPU enabled instance of Greenplum. Uh, we chose to train the model externally. For us, it was about uh, taking advantage of having some flexibility and being able to experiment uh, quickly with using fewer or more GPU cores when we're training it, uh, because we want to train the model quickly, but also cost effectively. Um, and also it just kind of let us train the model without needing to worry about doing any sort of like memory tuning or calibration 
um, that you sometimes have to perform with a GPU enabled green plum cluster. Um, however, the next talk uh, after mine will go into detail on how this can be like deep learning in general can be performed on a GPU enabled green plum cluster. And you know, generally this that architecture is better supported for or better suited <laughs> um, for problems where you, where you need to perform like a grid search or a distributed auto ML um, type of technique. So next slide, please. So some specifics on how we use BERT um, on our GPU cluster. Uh, so we were able to fine tune the model, which used about uh, a million additional emails and attachments in three to four hours on a, uh, AWS on a P2X large instance, which is one of their GPU instances with uh, 2,496 parallel processing cores. Me. Um, and so the speed uh, is due to our use of GPU environment. Deep learning problems in general are pretty famously parallelizable. And so you see significant performance gains on GPU, uh, any sort of GPU enabled environment. Um, and so once you know, back inside Greenplum, then we load the fine tune model into memory uh, with PL Python and we're able to perform inference on emails in question to determine if they contain information that would indicate a sender or recipient is a potential person of interest. Um, and so Greenplum is able to classify the emails pretty quickly because it has you know, an MPP architecture and lets us classify different sets of emails in parallel because the data in each of the emails is kind of sharded across each node of the cluster. And with PLPython, we can directly load the TensorFlow model and database from a pickle um, instead of having to write a separate script and deal with that. Um, and so the model that we built and just BERT models in general, they take a sentence of email data generate the vector encoding that I mentioned before. And we use that to train our classifier and to identify if the sentence is indicative of a person of interest. And then if an email has a, at least one sentence that's flagged uh, as coming from a person of interest, uh, then we flag the email for review. Okay, uh, next slide. So here I kind of have an example of an email that was flagged by our model. Uh, it's potentially indicative of fraud and so to see how that is, we kind of have to do a little unpacking. Um, but so the email is to Ben Gleason, uh, who was Enron's treasurer, and Andrew Fastow, who was uh, their CFO, I believe. Um, and both of them were indicted in the lawsuit. And uh, so it's talking about corporations that they called raptors um, that were used to, the Enron used to kind of to hide debt. And so you can see the sentence uh, that was flagged by the model, it's highlighted at the bottom. Um, it discusses the share price of one of Enron's stock holdings called uh, TNPC. Um, and it talks, you know, mentions how it would cause financial problems to one of their Raptor companies that they're using to hide the debt. And this particular Raptor, I guess they mentioned the email, uh, Raptor 3, um, was actually, it turns out, hidden from Enron's board of directors and wasn't really uncovered or like its purpose wasn't really revealed until the investigation. So, you know, something like this, when uh, you know, if our, you know, if they had a model that could have flagged this beforehand, it could have potentially, you know, the company could have handled it internally instead of having the whole situation kind of blow up. Um, and so, for you know, future uh, customers who are interested in this, the kind of goal of our solution is that we can easily integrate it with existing audit software that they already have, like Nuix, um, and utilize APIs to, you know, automatically flag emails like this one in the in the future for further review by finance and legal teams. Uh, next slide. So summary of the results. Um, so to summarize our findings, uh, we found that leveraging attachment data can be potentially helpful, uh, especially the data is like natural language, like a Word doc or a PDF. Um, but it can also add a lot of noise to the model. Um, so attachments like spreadsheets are not particularly design or NLP models are not particularly designed to like parse those or draw any meaning from those. So that can add noise. Um, and so when we flag, you know, when we decided how to train the model on like how you flag a sentence as being from a person of interest, um, we didn't have like specific emails that were necessarily indicative of fraud. Uh, so we instead kind of trained it on by identifying emails from uh, people who were later indicted. Uh, so we identify them, like we flag them at the person level, not the email level. And so using that method, we were able to get uh, an AUC of a little over 0.72 um, and almost certainly using email level data would 
definitely improve this score. Um, and yeah, the big takeaway for us was ultimately we found Nuix, Greenplum, and BERT, especially uh, you know for us when it's fine tuned on a GPU environment, it's pretty ineffective and or inexpensive, sorry, and cost effective uh, solution to performing these kinds of classification tasks on large amounts of unstructured text. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, if anybody has questions, please direct them to the chat or uh, reach out to us directly. Um, you can see our contact information there. You can reach out. And you know, if you're interested in finding more out about this use case uh, implementation or just data science consulting in general, please reach out to us at E42 Labs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. We always love to see the real solutions in action and your um, story about Enron, at least for folks my age, uh, should certainly uh, resonate. So I appreciate you taking the time to go through all of it today.